This YouTube studio is probably a little bit outside the norm, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted something that I could put away very easily and not have unsightly camera gear all over the place. And I also wanted it to be different than everybody else's that I saw on YouTube with a whole bunch of things and accessories on the desks, way too much camera gear than necessary. I also didn't like how the studios looked like studios. I wanted my space to look like an office. The first thing you'll notice is that the camera is on an arm instead of a tripod. It is the Rode PSA One Plus. I think it's a great arm. I think that the logos were really obnoxious, which is why I made that video about removing the logos. And the reason that I put the camera on this is because I found that when it was just sitting on a tripod over in the corner, it was very ugly to me and it just got in the way. And then when I wasn't using it, then my room just looked like a YouTube studio instead of my office. So I wanted to be able to collapse it up and put it away very easily, but then also not have to put anything in shelves or actually be put away, hence the collapsing of the arm. Then I also wanted to be able to quickly make a video for my community, upload that straight from the computer so everything was connected and I didn't have to deal with memory cards as such. Not only does it work as my YouTube setup, but it also doubles as my streaming slash Zoom sales call camera. Next thing you'll notice is the boom mic that's on the arm instead of a mic stand. I have a mic stand, but it was very big on the floor. It was annoying if I ever changed my setup. This is much more free and again, solves the same problem of being able to be tucked away and then pulled out very quickly. I really found that this arm setup for me really, really works cleaning up from studio to streaming to office really, really quick. In addition, you will notice that there's no wires anywhere. The reason that is, is because I just dislike wires. So I have the Rode News Shooter XLR wireless system, and I have that attached to a large Sony battery. I barely ever charge it. This really, really works. I just throw them on when I turn on the camera, and I'm good to go for hours and hours and hours. And all of this quickly connects into my laptop, which is collapsed into a clamshell mode most of the time. And then on those cases that I need a second screen, I just open it up and I can have that second resource on the laptop screen while I'm working on my main one. Now the key light that is lighting me is the Aperture 120D with a large softbox and grid. I use the grid because it helps control the light and keeps it from spilling across the room. I actually like how a gridless light looks on a person but it really does just blow out whatever is behind them if it's too close. You'll notice two lights behind me. They're both the Govi lights with the RGB, and I do change them depending on the type of material that I'm talking about. And in my community, you'll also notice I'm almost always going with red. And I really like how that looks. It just looks like this basement demon awesome badassness. So I like that opportunity to change from something that's very clean, as you can see here, to double down on that dark and badassness. I also have a third extra red light just filling up the background just a little bit more. And that is attached to the key light stand on a eye footage arm, which I think is an incredible arm. Now, moving on to some of the furniture, you will notice that I'm sitting in the same Herman Miller Aeron chair that I bought about eight to 10 years ago. It is the best chair for sitting long hours in, and it's absolutely something that I would say is one of the most valuable pieces of gear that I have in my studio. However, when I am not sitting, I am working on a standing desk. Now you'll notice that this is the standing desk and because the arms of the camera are attached to the desk, they just rise up and everything stays in place. I don't have to move anything. So the great thing about this is I can be on a call or just film a video for standing setups and there is no change to how it will look or what I have to do. I can just keep on about it as is. And in the background, I just have a few decorations that I like from the knife deck for my EDC carry 
to little Ikea plant and where I charge my iPad. Also, just some smelly good things like a candle or whatever. So you'll also probably wonder, where is all the rest of my gear? Well, I keep that on a white little Ikea trolley in the closet. And I keep everything organized in the Peter McKinnon cubes, which I use with my backpack, the everyday Peter McKinnon backpack. This way, everything is very modular and I just grab things and go, keeping my life very simple. And then when I wanna charge things, such as batteries or whatever I might need, I just roll it out right out to the outlet and plug it in for a couple hours. Even when it's sitting in the room, because it's similar color as the wall, it blends in and it's not too ugly. And then of course, when I'm done, I just scoop it right back into the closet and it's completely out of the way, making the room really nice. You might think, well, that light is really big. And yeah, I am still looking for a better solution for this, but because of the way that everything is laid out in the room, I can just move that light over into the corner and keep the door open. And it's almost as if it's hiding it away. So when I walk in the room, I don't even notice it. My main computer monitor is a Dell. I don't even know which one it is, but it was a very color accurate monitor, which is why I got it. I wanted a simple, basic one monitor setup. And you'll see that attached to a white Ergotron arm. And I really love the fact that it's white because when I look over, it seems to blend into the room much nicer than a black arm. And I feel like it just keeps the lines of the desk very clean. As far as the pricing goes for this thing, yeah, it's a bit pricey, but it is absolutely worth it. When you go through a few arms, uh, you'll notice that they are really cheap. You get what you pay for, and the Ergotron is worth it. You may not even notice it right away, but when you keep using it, moving it around and everything day after day, month after month, you'll realize the quality and the strength and just the stability of the Ergotron over the cheaper Amazon ones. And underneath that, you will also see a white Marshall Stanmore 2. I had to wait a while to get the white one, and I think it's amazing. However, it is a bit large for the desk, but the sound is really good. I am looking to find a new solution for audio, but this is really, really great. In front of that, you will see my keyboard and Wacom setup, which I've had for years and years and years, which is the Keychron K4. I really like this compact keyboard. I personally need the keypad for After Effects and the software that I use quite often entering number values. I didn't wanna get one of the smaller poker type of keyboards, although I would. The good thing with this is that it fits the width of the Wacom medium that is right below it. Once I went Wacom, I could never turn back. It took me a little bit to get used to it when way back. And now I realize that it's like working inside the computer instead of holding a rock, moving a mouse around a screen. Wacom is the way to go once you know. And both of those are sitting on top of a little piece of felt, which helps me move it around whenever I need it, whether it's push it forward and back or to the side when I need to do something straight in front of the monitor. Another thing that I have set up for convenience is I have the Peak Design system with my phone. So I have the little mounts all over the place and one of the mounts is in the corner of my desk. So I can just quickly tuck my phone up in there, out of sight, I don't see the screen and I can check it when I want to. This helps me be a little bit more productive instead of having my phone on my desk staring me in the face for every notification that may come up. So the point of this whole studio is to be multi-use, multi-function, very clean, very minimalist, I think beautiful, out of sight when it gets collapsed and put away. But then also, again, not a hassle and just a pain to be able to take it out and use it. I've gone through so many ways of setting things up and I've found that this is really one of my favorite setups I've had to date. It was a little bit of an investment in the arms and putting everything on wheels and the sit stand and the lights that are permanent. So the cool thing with like those Govies is that they're there, they're part of the room. And these arms are part of the desk. So I really like this integration multi-use approach where there isn't just stuff all over. Instead of like lights on stands and stuff, 
I wanted it to be as beautiful as everything else that I put in. So this is my approach to my YouTube studio. I think it's really unique. Not everything is perfect about it. For example, the PSA One Plus arm doesn't love carrying that camera all too well. It's good, it does the job, but it could be a little bit stronger. Oh, and then as far as the light goes, I still haven't found a perfect solution to feel like there's an integrated lamp in the room that illuminates me the right way, just like the backgrounds do. That is my YouTube studio setup. I hope this helps inspire you in some way. Until next time, cheers.